My name is Adrena, and I am the owner and accountant here at Accounting by Adrena LLC. And today I am so excited. I am going to walk you through the newest version of QuickBooks Self Employed. So in 2020, they did some massive updates to the QuickBooks Self Employed version. And I am just thrilled about these updates because it's going to help you become way more accurate with your. QuickBooks financials. And this is only for the self-employed individual. And so I just want to be very clear about that. It's the um, one of a different version of QuickBooks. QuickBooks has like four different versions that you can do online. And so this is for the self-employed individual. So I do have another video that is up about self-employed, but this is going to be the updated video, the updated version. This is going to be a content heavy video. So feel free to pause this video at any point in time, write down your notes. And also if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you could see more of this great content coming at you. All right, friends, let's dig right in. All right, friends, I am just going to provide you this link where it shows you you can do a QuickBooks test drive and trial links. So that way you can use these um, resources at your disposal. They have a trial link for QuickBooks self-employed that you can do. Uh, it says 50% off for three months. So if you click on this button here that says buy now, that's where it will take you, which is great. It's a great deal. So I'm going to go to uh, QuickBooks Self-Employed Test Drive, and I'm just going to walk you through this whole process. Okay, we could just click on Continue to Self Test Drive. All right, so this is going to be kind of like the home page of what you will see when you log into QuickBooks Self-Employed online. Now, um, there's going to be a few things that I want to point out to you. One of the cool things is that they're trying to aggregate some data for you so that you can see a profit and loss for the past three months, your expenses over the past three months, any invoices that you have going on, and um, your mileage. So this is also going to provide you an estimate for what you owe for estimated taxes. Um, and so obviously Q1 <laughs> doesn't have any information in it right now. Okay, the um, other thing that I wanna point out to you guys is that you can customize this homepage. So you can click here and you can say, well, I just wanna really look at this month. So since there's no data there, obviously it's gonna be zero. If you want to look at this year, you can say, I'm just gonna look at this year. So it would include all the dates um, that have the information included. You can also look at last year data. So however you want to view this, the last three months, you know, if you're looking at it on a quarterly perspective, it's going to save it. Um, so that way the next time you log in, you'll find that this information is updated. All right, so the next thing I wanna point out to you, um, they do try to give you some quick links here, so I just usually try to um, X out of that because I'm not interested in that right now. The other thing I wanna show you is um, that you can connect your bank accounts. So you can connect a cash account, credit card, and maybe you have like a savings account attached to your business, you can also connect it that way. So if we click on view, it's gonna show you what accounts you have connected. And so there's a checking account, there's a credit card account, and it says on, so that's great. Now, if you wanted to connect another account, you would just click on this little button. You would choose whichever um, bank account that you have. Obviously, this is a test drive situation, so it's not really gonna allow us to go any further. Um, so we're gonna go back here, and then I'm gonna X out of here. So what, what it's going to do is under this tab here where it says transactions, it's going to pull in all of your banking transactions from whichever date you selected. So let's say I am only interested in pulling in 2020 data. So I would just, when I'm logging in and um, connecting my bank account, I would just say this year data only. There's an option for that. So don't worry about that. So then it'll pull everything into this section here that says transactions. And what you need to do is then go through each individual transaction and figure out if 
you know, if this is business, if this is personal, or if this is a split situation. So it gives you a hint that these categories in this column here will be for Schedule C only, okay? So let's start. So let's say you have a, a home office situation. So for this first transaction here, it's going to tell you um, business, personal, or split. So if you have a home office, you can select business and it's already going to recognize that since you put rent in here in this transaction description, it's going to say this is a home office deduction. So this is rent for your home office. And then you, you need to click save so it remembers that. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna look at is the income. So for income here, we're going to go ahead and say that's business. And then it will automatically, since it's kind of like um, an addition to your bank account, it'll automatically think that it's income. So you can just save that one. Okay, so for utilities, since you are saying that, yes, I do have a home office deduction, so you can just go ahead and click on business and it's going to tell you that it's gonna go on Schedule C for the home office deduction and save that. Common Grounds Cafe. Okay, so let's just say this is a personal expense. So we can just say personal, and it's going to say personal spending here. Now, what this version isn't showing you is that you can actually categorize this in a personal uh, section. And so I would say like dining out or something like that. And that way you can kind of like take a look at what is actually going on in your business and what is actually going on in your personal spending. So I like that feature. I'm sad that it's not updated here in the tutorial, in the test drive, I mean, um, but hopefully they'll get to that soon enough. All right, so Amtrak, let's say you have Amtrak um, and this is a travel expense. So let's go ahead and say that's business and it's gonna recognize that it's a travel expense. Now, if it was like um, something different, so let's say, you know, vehicle. So then you could select whatever category it is. All right, so that's kind of like a quick overview of how you would categorize each of those transactions. They make it very clear for you and pretty straightforward. So it's easy to identify and it's easy to um, work, your, work your way through. So the home tab is what we first talked about. And then the second tab was the transactions. And then um, let's go ahead and talk about the reports next because I like this feature. And this is also an update that they did um, in 2020. So I'm really excited about that. And that is this little report here called profit and loss. And um, you know, typically when I talk with self-employed individuals, they aren't looking at their um, financials in a profit and loss situation. And so this is really gonna be very helpful for you guys so that you can analyze how your business is going. So right now the filter says it's gonna be for last year. So let's just say we wanted to look at year to date. So that would be January through today's date. And then I would click on view. There's another drop down here that says view, print, download, or email, which is really great. They give you um, several different options that you can look at it, but I'm just gonna view it for now. So um, it's giving us a generic name, Jennifer Smith, and it's saying January 1st through March 25th, here's what it looks like. So your business income is all aggregated in this number here, 16,535. And then all of your expenses are listed here and they are also aggregated in these numbers as well. So it actually shows you what your net income is year to date. So January 1st through March 25th. And this is really cool. So this is a great um, way that you can just start analyzing your business financials uh, through QuickBooks. Now the other report that I wanna draw your attention to is, um, okay, let's X out of here is the tax summary report. So let's say we're gonna look at 2020 tax year and it's gonna show you a summary. This is like your business profit and loss, basically totals for Schedule C and healthcare deductions. So let's click on view and see what that looks like. 
Okay, so this is another kind of like profit and loss summary, but it's going to show you a little bit more detail and especially these Schedule C deductions. So this is really what um, your spending is here and then what your deduction will be here in this column. So I really like the fact that they split that out just so you can see it. Um, they are also showing you your business mileage, which is another tab that you can uh, track your miles here. I'm not going to go into detail on this video about that. Um, and then there is a standard rate deduction, so $119 for uh, 207 miles. For This is year to date only, so January through March. Um, <clears throat> Now for the home office deduction, they have a separate section and they say this is going to be 200 square feet and $5 per square feet, which is the standard amount. Um, and then these are your actual uh, spending and then this is the standard deduction. So very, very straightforward, very clear. Um, if you had any kind of business assets, let's talk about like machinery or if you had a car that was related to your business, um, any kind of those things, they would be entered here. You would see that information here. Um, and then for healthcare, you would uh, set this up under the tax checklist, which is up here. And then it would tell you what your estimated tax payments will be. Okay, so this is kind of like the report that you can review prior to filing your tax, your quarterly estimated taxes. So tax details, now let's go here for 2020. And then let's download this. And this is really cool as well. Um, I like this, um, the way that they have this Excel spreadsheet laid out. So I'm going to show you that as well. Okay, so this is the spreadsheet that uh, QuickBooks automatically generated. So it says 2020 business summary and it's going to be all the dates. So January through December, although there's no data there. Um, this is just for review. So what it does is actually shows you a quarterly breakdown of your um, your business financials, which again is very cool. I really like how they laid it out. It's very um, clear and straightforward for you. And if you had any kind of questions as far as like, okay, wait, what is in this number here? Then you would come down here and you would look for the tab that says home office expenses. So we'd have to scroll to the right a little bit and then see this tab that says home office expenses. And it's going to show you all of the data that you have in QuickBooks for that time period, which again is very cool. I like that they do this. Um, so you can double check all your line item detail there. You can also double check your business income. You can check this against your bank statements and it tells you which account it is in case you have a couple of accounts that are connected. No advertising. Um, let's see what else is going to be included. So let's look at meals. All right. So meals. Okay, so it's going to show us that there are several meals here and remember meals are not 100% deductible. So it's going to be probably 50% of this total here. All right. And then there's that travel expense that we looked at. And then it shows you all of the totals and deductions. These are the miles tracked for January as well, or for the first quarter, I'm sorry. So again, very cool. I like how they do that. And then when you are ready, you can come up here to the taxes tab. And this is how you can file your quarterly taxes. So they have two tabs here at the top. One is for annual and then one is for quarterly. So we're going to look at the quarterly one. So for Q1, what you would do is just download those reports you know, double check all this information for Q1, make sure it looks good to you. And then when you're ready, you can come over here and um, follow the prompts so you can file your estimated taxes. So right now it's 
actually telling us that we have one thing that we need to review for um, the tax checklist, but we can just click on this little prompt here and it's going to tell you all of these, all of these things, which is really great. Um, you can review it here and then it highlights in blue what you need to review. So we can go directly to that with that link and it says Joanna stores. Okay. So uncategorized. So let's just consider this like an office supply perhaps. All right. Now um, you can also use these quick links up here to go to your estimated tax due. And then um, once you're good with everything, you just click on pay now. And then it's uh, actually filled out in 1040 ES payment voucher for you. So all you would do is you could um, double check the amount that you're paying. And then if you're filing jointly with your spouse, if you do that on an annual basis, you would wanna make sure that you click yes here. Your spouse's name, social, and then your name, social, your address. And then you would click on continue here. It's gonna walk you through how to print this and where to mail it. Now, if you want to choose to do it online, what you could do is get this amount and then you can go to the IRS website and they have some quick links for you to pay online, but you would wanna make sure that you pay that amount. When you finish your tax checklist, it'll show that you're um, complete there, which is great. And then when you do end up paying your taxes, um, QuickBooks will recognize that payment, either if you made it by check or if you did it online, when it comes through on the transactions tab. And if you are trying to find your tax payment, if QuickBooks did not recognize it, then you would just come here, there's a little drop down right here. You would just click on find your estimated tax payments and then it would give you a list of items that they think might be one of them. All right, well, that's it for now. I am glad that you have watched this video and please let me know if there's anything that you had questions on that you'd like me to dive deeper into on a next video.